like a young love stricken fool. I fell completely for Martha. The next two weeks became trying to focus in school while watching the clock that moved at a snail's pace on volume. When the bell finally rang, I would come home. See how Pop was doing, then bounce over to Martha's. I really wanted to tell someone that there was a junior in high school, punk rock goddess, that was letting me kiss her and write poetry all over her body. But I kept hearing Pop's voice telling me not to say anything. And besides, everyone I knew was a writer and storyteller, and they wouldn't have believed me anyway. Pop found a tent tucked away in the upstairs closet and helped me put it up. Gonna get cold soon. You'll have to start sleeping inside again, but this will help until then. School, Pop, Martha. Sleeping outside, writing and drawing. I had found a safe little spot where I didn't feel afraid. I felt safe and happy. Perhaps that is what growing up is. Finding that happiness and safety in a sometimes very cruel world. The events in our lives add layer upon layer. The layers are both good and bad. Those events are what make us who we are. All we can do is try our best to find a balance in the layers. I felt like I was finding me. I was finding me and I was finding a balance. I ran home from school to find Pop and Martha sitting in the backyard drinking Mountain Dews and laughing the day away. I froze in both fear and excitement. Hey, hoss, Pop said, lighting a Raleigh and grinning as he put his Zippo back in his breast pocket. Have had some mighty fine company today. Mighty fine. Hi, I said, smiling at Martha. Hi, back. Mom and her boyfriend are at the house, so I thought I'd come see you. I, I, did, I didn't even know you knew where I lived small town, and I followed you home one night so I would know. This one here's a spitfire, hoss, Pop said. Pull up a chair. Martha and I sat with Pop as he told her various stories of his life. Part tart. Fuck off me! God fucking damn it! Ah! Martha and I sat with Pop as he told her various stories of his life. Part tall tale, part truth, and all of them ending with a sarcastic comment from Pop and gut-busting laughter from Martha and myself. I had heard the story. <clears throat> I had heard the stories before, but I couldn't help but laugh as Pop grinned and Martha would slap my leg and hold her sides. Several Mountain Dews, side-splitting laughter, and a pack of Raleigh's later, we watched as the sun fell past the horizon. And Pop said, Well, that is my cue. Trademark groan. Scoot to the edge. Bounce three times. Slowly stand up with another loud groan. Then shuffle the feet a little for balance. He climbed out of the chair and headed inside. Don't rub the rhubarb, hoss was all he said as he walked into the house. And, and Martha and I were left alone in the yard. Don't rub the rhubarb? Martha asked. Yeah, Pop ha has a lot of sayings. That one is one of his favorites. God, I love that man. Get the fuck off me! <sighs> This isn't fucking hard enough! Just stay the fuck off of me until I get done. You guys are gonna feed on me all night fucking anyway! Just give me a fucking break! Ugh.
God, I love that man. He is freaking awesome. We sat out in the yard and watched the stars. Sometimes time will stop for a fool in love. And this was one of those moments. Everything meant something and nothing was lost. After checking on Pop for the final time, I came out to find Martha waiting by the tent. Want some company tonight? That was like, get the fuck off me! That was like asking Superman if he would like to fly! We crawled in the tent together, got comfortable underneath the sleeping bag, and she laid her head on my chest, and we just talked. We talked music, books, poetry. I rambled on and on with all the stories in my head as her fingers caressed my chest and stomach. Eventually, we fell into a dreamless sleep. I woke up with a gentle hand and a kiss on my lips. Wake up. Come outside with me. We crawled out of the tent and into the first morning light. We crawled out of the tent and into the first morning light. The sun... God! Sometime in the night, it had rained a little, just enough to layer everything with fine mist that reflected the sun. Martha pointed at a bright green leaf on the nearest tree. There was a single sunbeam coming through the branches and hitting it just in the right place. At its very tip was one drop of water that bounced up and down in the gentle breeze of the morning. Holding on and not falling, the raindrop reflected the sun like a strobe light in a busy nightclub. There was just something so simple, yet so amazing about that moment. Oh yeah, there's critters in the fucking walls too. I don't know how they got in there, but now they're decided to chew right now at this time, which you know, hey, I listen to that all night right now, so that's that's great. Wouldn't want this to be easy or anything. Sometimes we miss all the beauty around us, she said as they she held my hand in hers. We never stop and just look. Come on, guys. You gotta give me a fucking break, man. God damn it. Something so small can be so powerful and beautiful. It can bring light where there is darkness. She gave me a gentle kiss. I'm biting my lower lip as she pulled away. Sometimes all you have to do is listen and look. Try not to forget that. We held hands and watched the rain drop until it finally fell from the leaf and vanished in the grass. She kissed me again and then said, I have to head home before Mom wakes up. As she walked off, I told her I would be by after school. 
She looked back, smiled, then turned around and headed home. Really? And no, I'm trying to block it out. Fuck this shit. I walked up to Martha's door and found a note with my name on it. Taking the note down, I glanced in the window and saw that the living room was empty. My gut fell through a pit of lava, glass, and cold emptiness as I grabbed the doorknob, knowing what I was about to find. The door, the, the door opened with a very lonely groan as I walked in and called Martha's name. Creak and moan, creak and moan, creak and moan. My footsteps echoed through the empty house as I confirmed what I already knew. I looked down at the note in my hand, sat on the floor, and tried to wipe away the tears so I could read the letter. I don't believe in saying goodbyes. Mom and I move around so much, that is all I ever would do. I know when you find this note, you are going to be hurt. There is always an equal amount of pain with pleasure in this world, and I hope the pleasure we shared will eventually even out the pain you feel. And for the brief time I was here, you gave me a pleasure and friendship that I will never forget. Just stop for a while! Keep mining those words. Keep speaking from your heart. And keep revealing things of yourself that most people will not do. Keep dancing. And remember, the more you do this, the more people will see your light shining brighter and brighter in your eyes. That is where you are going to find your strength. Really. Really. Probably fucking rats. Rats in the fucking walls. My adorable bard. Come on. Just please. Stop! Stop! Just for one fucking minute! Just please stop. I sat on the floor and kept crying as I read the note over and over again. The place that Martha had filled with joy and laughter was suddenly a place of pain and emptiness. You never forget your first real kiss. And you never forget your first real heartbreak. Thank you. I know that. I know that look and walk. Pop said as I slouched through the back door. That is the look and tears of a broken heart. Seeing that Pop felt okay and wasn't sick, I gave him a smile. Walked up to my room fell on my bed and cried in my pillow until I, I couldn't cry anymore. Creak and moan. Creak and moan. Creak and moan. I heard Pop's footsteps as he walked up the stairs with his usual slow step and... Ow! Ow! Shit! Fuck! Pain chant. Those stairs hurt him so bad at the end. My face still buried in my pillow, I felt him sit on the edge of my bed. There you go, Hoss. As I sat up, he put the Mountain Dew can in my hand, ruffled my hair, and said, Okay, what happened? I told him everything. From meeting Martha on the log, writing poetry on her, to, staying, to her staying in the tent. Pop listened the entire time as he went through his rallies and nodded his head to let me know he was listening. After telling him after telling him everything, I handed him the note. That was on the door. After reading the note, he handed it back to me. Hurts like hell, doesn't it? 
I nodded as another round of tears fell from my eyes, and I quickly wiped them away in embarrassment. Pop patted my leg and said, Fuck, hoss, get it out. You can't keep that shit inside. It eats you alive. Trust me, I know. He lit another Raleigh, put the Zippo back in his breast pocket and rubbed his stump and thought, he was about to give me one of his pop's peaches. Finally, he looked at me, took a deep drag from his Raleigh, exhaled and said, I hate to tell you this, Hawes. Another drag from the Raleigh. Remember that hee-haw life lesson I told you when you first met her? Well, this is it. And this is going to fucking happen a lot. Not what I was expecting at all. And I think the look on my face showed that fact. Pop held up his hand. Now hang on. <laughs> this is a long winding path, but I will get there. Several more drags from the Raleigh went by as I waited, and the tears dried on my cheeks. Sometimes we forget the happiness in our lives because all we can do is hold on to the ending of something and the pain in it, the pain that it causes. If you are not careful, you wind up going through life only remembering that pain, and then eventually the happiness just doesn't want anything to do with you at all anymore. A drag from the Raleigh. Right now, all you can do is think about her leaving and the pain she caused you. You think about how much more pain she is going to cause as you miss her and you want her back. But Pop let out a soft chuckle. But Hoss, you're kind of missing the boat because you won't get out of the water. He lit another Raleigh, put the silver Zippo back in his breast pocket and exhaled. You just told me that for the last month. Give or take. You have been hanging out with a woman several years older than you. Who can make men want to give up their good ways just for a peek at what she has underneath those clothes. And you have been writing your poetry on her in the most secret places of all places. Well, that kind of sunk in. Well, Hoss... Your pecker ain't done growing yet, and you barely even have hair on your chest. You're not even in high school, and every boy within a hundred mile radius practically beats off to what you just lived. Another drag from the Raleigh. That girl gave you a gift, Hoss. You need to remember that. Trademark grown. Scoot to the edge. Bounce three times. Slowly stand up with another loud groan. Then shuffle the feet a little for balance. Pop stood up, smiled, and ruffled my hair. Someone gave me the same speech when I was your age. That is what we do, I guess. Really, I have no idea how to get you out of the walls. But you did give me a minute, so I can't really argue. We grow old and hope the youngins will not make the same mistakes we made. But come on! Stop! Just... I'm not going to get any sleep again the fucking night. We grow old and hope the youngins will not make the same mistakes we made. They... They hope they... We hope they learn easier than we did. Please stop. <laughs> stop. Just. Just please stop until I just get the fucking book done! Just stop!
We grow old and hope the youngins will not make the same mistakes we made. They hope they learn easy. We hope they learn easier than we did. Damn it! But sometimes you don't understand until you grow old, and most of your life you will try to catch up with what you want or what you miss, and you will fucking fail. And when you get to be my age, Hoss, then you will get it. And I'm his age now. Until then, you just try to let the pain go, Hoss. Remember the remember the naked pixie that let you create all over that body. That right there is a good memory and a good day. And a good day will help you survive the bad. I smiled at Pop. He just had a way of making things seem not so heavy. Especially when the world around me felt like it weighed a lifetime. God damn it, get off me. Just get off me. And I weighed nothing. Th thanks, Pop. Fucking damn it! Leave me alone! He started to walk out of the room. You're welcome, Hoss. He pointed to my journal and several blank canvases. I'll get this out like you always do. You will feel better. As he was walking down the stairs, I heard him say, And try not to use that damn green stick so much, or at least be more quiet about it. That damn thing creeps me out. You sound like a bunch of monkeys trying to fuck a watermelon. Just stop. You never forget your real first kiss. You never forget your real first real heartache. You never forget the first real speech your elder gives you. People come into our lives for brief moments. I can't do anything to stop you from just chewing on the fucking walls. I can't do a single fucking thing to stop you. And you're not going to fucking stop. Probably rats. It is a powerful and magical moment. And those special things do not, they cannot stay in our lives very long because the magic is just too strong. Their song cannot be idle. But for that brief moment, for that brief time in our lives. Whatever gift of magic they give us, it helps us on our path to becoming who we are. Another musical note in our song that we will one day sing. I can't stop whatever the fuck is in the walls. A rat, fucking mice, I don't, I don't know what it is, but they won't stop fucking chewing. I think this... I have two more chapters, and then this is fucking done. And I will ne 